Uh, so I'm the uh, CEO of Market Engine, and we help <coughs> businesses to go into China using e-commerce platforms. Um, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a really senior um, manager at a large e-commerce platform, and he was telling me uh, how important uh, logistics is uh, in the landscape of e-commerce. Because every day that your product is delayed uh, in arriving to the consumer, your customer satisfaction falls a little bit. And every single dollar that you're able to save from logistics, that goes straight to your profitability. And it's really, really important when you look at the Chinese e-commerce landscape, um, in particular because uh, when you go on a site like Tmall, the price that you see is inclusive of shipping. So um, when you drop a little bit in terms of shipping uh, costs, um, a lot of that goes straight into your revenue. Um, so um, when you look at, uh, when I started this, uh, the whole e-commerce uh, venture into China, I thought, you know, it, it couldn't be easier. You just give the parcel to Aussie Post and it lands with the Chinese consumer. But uh, who knew there are so much complications within that entire supply chain in terms of the duties, with uh, uh, taxation, with the declaring the right HS codes, with uh, making sure the parcel has the right format, and all these different channels to the market. And after the introduction of um, quite a few different policies by the Chinese government, uh, this, this supply chain is a lot more mature than before. So we have a couple of uh, three uh, really good, uh, actually, sorry, four really good speakers for you tonight um, from SF Express, Rex, EWE, and Australia Post. So, uh, without further ado, I'd love to uh, introduce you guys to um, Kenneth from SF Express. Now, um, come on down. No, 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 no. And um, SF Express. Uh, SF Express is um, probably one of the most uh, recognized names in logistics in China. Um, so uh, I heard a, uh, one of our um, team members in China say, if they want to buy a product in mean, the product description page and see the SF uh, Express logo, they're more likely to purchase the product because they know the product will arrive um, you know, um, really fast and will arrive really securely. Uh, they know it's a great service. So love to hand over the mic. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Thanks Roy. Thanks for the my name is Kenneth, coming out from uh, uh, SF Express Australia. Um, thanks for the compliment, Roy. Uh, basically, uh, when people look at our brand, especially in China, uh, we do have a reputation. And I think uh, we still feel new in the Australia market, and um, we just started last year in August. So we pretty much, I would say, uh, through the early stage, we're still learning uh, from all you know, partners from all uh, friends as well. So uh, basically, I would say we're still on a path, um, you know, doing from more domestic uh, parcels into international. So this is basically um, the direction we are looking at, and this is really something we are moving forward. So uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe everyone will only have 15 minutes, I'll try and be very tight. So basically, um, we've got 51 on... Freighters, which means we've got our own airlines, but at the moment I would say 99% still very domestic focus. Uh, we are moving forward to international and starting from last year, we're moving from China into uh, Japan, also into Vietnam this year. Also, uh, we, we do have a plan actually launching direct flight into Australia. It's on the way, but uh, still very high level. And other than that, we've got um, uh, our self-owned vehicles, our main lines, our secondary lines. Main lines means uh, it's more for uh, tier one cities, including different countries, include different city areas. And the secondary lines, uh, which is uh, 68,000, that actually means the routing into tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five cities. So, which means our 60 distribution centers actually servicing eight regional distribution centers. That covers at least 88% of the whole China region. Okay. Uh, another part, uh, I think this is very unique things we have in China is uh, what we call uh, online and offline community store. So basically, um, this is what we call SF Best. And it provides a online store, an online trading platform, for example, pretty much like uh, Taobao and uh, 
team more, but very much more focused on food and beverage. Um, it has more than 1,000 stores nationwide located in middle to high class residential areas. So I would say more on the east and southeast region of China. And, and all these community stores has actual products actually sitting in the supermarkets. So it actually linked with online store. So basically when you place an order online, it will arrive into the store and you can actually straight away pick it up or you can actually um, arrange delivery by SF Express. So um, that's a quick snapshot about uh, how the online and offline works together. So basically, um, all capabilities is basically from the production inspection, we work with CIC. CIC is a certified inspection, which is actually authorized by the government. Uh, we are actually working with them in regards to the product inspection and production, including sampling, sampling stage. And at the middle, we do logistics, customs, and CIQ goes to the China customs, and final, we do have a sales channel for those manufacturer or for those brand, uh, for those products as well. So we do have an option for the sales channel, but it's more related to you know food and beverage or consumer goods. So um, basically, I just want to share my um, I mean our understanding in regards to the difference between signing a major China e-commerce platform other than having the, having your own website selling to China. Mm -hmm. So this is actually um, with the background of, um, I mean, I assume everybody knows Tmall, JD, VIP, all these major platform channels which can actually boost your volume by advertising your product or having a online store over there. So basically, um, I believe um, a commonly recognition of the local brands are they actually go to sign and actually negotiate with Tmall or JD or VIP as a massive sales channel. I think that's that's been the that's been the trending for the most, I, I believe, previous ten to fifteen years. And I, I just would like to share, um, you know, a sort of um, advantage and disadvantage. I mean, uh, no offense, it's just basically uh, a fact uh, in regards to um, you know <coughs> having an own sales platform comparing to signing a an overseas channel. So basically, quickly, the advantage is uh, basically with an overseas sales channel, you can have less investment and setup cost. You can have massive consumer market, effective marketing channel, and quick start and result. Um, basically, you don't really have to worry about the customs because you have a overseas sales channel which actually assists you in regards to these and even doing the ownership, even you know having ownership of the goods. So um, comparing to these, your disadvantages is also having, you know, um, maybe customers, customers' experience will be limited. And also um, you have a uh, long, big contract to be signed, which you will probably spend three months into it. And also you have to put a deposit in regards to all these regulations, all these promotional products, which you need to actually um, entertain when those sales channels want you to do. So that's sort of a disadvantage you need to be aware of as well. So um, comparing to these disadvantages and advantage, the, the, you know, having your own platform actually on the right hand side, I would say uh, having your own platform, you have better brand experience, clear brand position and image in the market. Also, you have your key is your self-control in regards to those um, data which you can see which for example which excuse you are more popular which skew sells the most in the area and for those data you can actually have it controlled by yourself whereas on the other side um, you're probably just purely relying on the marketing and sales channel so um, having your own platform is another way of entering into e-commerce into China however uh, another major thing you need to resolve is the sales channel so um, I think today I've been told to share a case study which is more related to food and beverage. So I'm just showing a, a quick, uh, I'm just put up to get together today, sorry. Um, uh, so basically this is just a fresh milk project that we've been doing uh, since last year. Uh, the model is um, what we call as B2B2C. So at the moment, fresh milks are actually very, very popular in the China market and, and uh, most of the online sellers and also B2B merchants actually doing it. So um, the whole process we have in it actually uh, 
let's go through here is we actually help the manufacturer to do the product registration with CNNA, which is actually uh, a China Customs certified certification. So basically the product side from the raw material side, we actually help um, the manufacturer to do a registration and to get the approval procedure done with the government, with the customs of China. Then we set a batch of sample, which is over there. So we actually send the first sample into China to help to do the sampling in the customs. So I think we send it to Guangzhou. We sent it to Guangzhou from the beginning. It, it was about six kilos and we put about 10 kilo dry ice on top. So um, that actually stayed in customs for two weeks uh, during testing, during sampling and during all the documentation they wanted. And all these products actually have to keep in the store uh, cold, cold room. So um, that, that was the sampling period. It took us about um, three weeks um, just for the logistics side. And after that, um, we have to submit the related documents again. We have to do a second testing. So the whole process actually um, cost us about three sample shipments, which is about four weeks. And at the end, when all the certification has been done, um, when all the paperwork has been approved, um, this is the final AKE actually we've been doing, um, directly from here into China and into the final consumer's hand, which means the transit time of the whole cargo is actually three days, but actually the door-to-door -door only takes four to five days. So um, as we understand, normally fresh milk lifetime is about uh, 14 to 20 days. So I think the transit time is really vital because otherwise, um, you know, nobody wants to have a really bad taste milk in the table anyway. So um, I think over here, I would like to point it out that um, uh, for e-commerce, there, there are two different way of B to C, especially when it refers to food and beverage. Because um, for fresh milk and sometimes for uh, the fruits, you are not really be able to send it directly into the consumer. It has to go via what we call as B to B to C. So basically it has to go in as the general cargo, which uh, you have a consumer at the receiver side already own the goods, then you do it as a break bulk. So um, uh, maybe later, uh, I'm pretty sure the other speakers will be sharing more in regards to this. I basically just uh, want to mention two different models here. Um, Cross-border e-commerce uh, basically has two models. Uh, what we've been using is direct shipping mode, which is directly ordering from the overseas and air freighted into um, a relative uh, related gateway, and we do customs clearance straight away. And then after that, we break bulk and send it into the end consumer. I think on the top is, I think it's more popular over here. Uh, we send all the products into a bonded warehouse. Um, which probably will be a um, ambient warehouse. Uh, it's more related to other FMCG, for example, vitamins, for example, uh, cos uh, for example, uh, infant formulas. Uh, most cargo will be sent into the bonded warehouse, um, which will be more suitable to supply into those massive um, overseas sales channel. So based on each order, then we can really break it into each B to C customs clearance channel, then do the last mile delivery. So that's the two basic, um, I would say, shipping model that we have at the moment. For this, um, I basically just want to ask you guys a question. Do you guys, I'm not sure how familiar are we in regards to the B to C customs clearance channel. Are we familiar with these channels? Because I wasn't really sure that if everyone is familiar with this. Do you, Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can quickly go through it, but I'm sure, um, you know, maybe Peter, Peter and, you, and you know, Lisa, you might uh, want to add in more uh, during a later stage. It, um, in regards to these uh, B2C e-commerce, that means um, it's out of from a business into the end customer. So um, it, I think the key for the shipments to be happening is the customs clearance stage. So um, it's easy for us to just shoot it to the gateway. However, it, it, it's not that you know it's not that complicated uh, when we have those documents ready to be able to clear the goods and deliver to the you know the end customer. So um, 
To be able to do B2C customs clearance, and there are four elements which we really need to provide. So one is order information, payment information, ID collection, which is ID information. Last one is logistics info. Why I you know, put those things together is because normally when you have a platform or when you have a business, you want to send it to the end consumer, you need, the business is able to generate order information. Then the business also need to collect the end consumer's ID, which is a ID number. Also, the payment info. I think the key what we need to have here is the payment info. To be able to send goods into China, you need to provide a proper payment info. The, this payment info actually needs to be relevant into China government, which is an example over here. So these are the three relevant China payment tools. So I think we're familiar with WeChat, we're familiar with UnionPay and also Alipay. So either one of these needs to be entertained, So which means either you need to have it in China office, which will be able to generate those payment information and push it to the customs. Then customers will be evaluating the payment information against order information and then ID and we will provide the logistic information or your freight forwarder or your service provider will be providing the logistics information. So these are the three information, uh, sorry, four information altogether which you need in order to clear a parcel. So that's basically how the flow is. Any questions so far? Yes. So in regards to, I think you're more talking about over this side. Ah, CIQ. The CIQ, right? So for the CIQ side, it's more relevant to, I would say, uh, food and beverage. So basically when, when you have a Chinese labeling stick into out of the product so if the cargo going into china so the let's maybe put it this way so if, so if ciq if you have a parcel you want to send into the end consumer it has to go in via a b2b model if you're talking about food and beverage which means all the product needs to have a chinese label and when the chinese label Get into the China government, they will take example, which they'll take into CIQ. Sorry. B to C does need a label when it ref when it refers to food and beverage. Yeah. So, yep. so basically that is a customs clearance channel when you refer into logistics and customs clearance. So when you when you when you have a parcel which has already been approved by the China government and already done the CI commitment and all the sampling has been approved. After that, the logistics side and customs clearance side will be entertained as long as you have those information. Is that right? Thanks. I think, I think, I think that's pretty much I would like to share at the moment. And as said, uh, we're still moving from a very domestic focused in China company towards to an international. So I'm sure we're still learning from you know, our partners here and from the market as well. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Kenneth. As, as you guys have probably seen, there is just so much expertise and knowledge um, in this industry. Um, I, there, there are just experts, uh, I think, uh, for anybody who is engaging in e-commerce should engage to understand the full spectrum of options available to you. And uh, depending on the category that you are selling to China, um, different policies apply. Um, and I think it's also very important to understand uh, to get your products into China, you can uh, operate using a cross-border model, which, um, you know, if you're looking at the Alibaba landscape, that's where Timor Global applies. They have different tax rates, different payment systems, and you can use a Western entity. And if you're using a domestic e-commerce model, you would have to ship all of your products into China first and clear customs. And uh, that's a vastly different, more expensive, and uh, much lengthier process. Um, this 
topic has so much knowledge, so uh, feel free to ask uh, questions later when we have a you know, Q&A session. So next I'd like to invite uh, Peter uh, from EWE to the stage. Um, so uh, I've known Peter for a while. Um, he's, uh, EWE has certainly been in the uh, forefront of cross-border e-commerce uh, for quite a bit of time. And um, EWE is one of the um, few selected Tanyao partners. And uh, Tanyao is the, um, uh, the network that Alibaba has created for logistics. So if you are uh, sending products to the Chinese consumer and sold this product through the uh, Alibaba platform Tmall or Tmall Global, uh, you would have to use one of the authorized Tanyao providers. Um, and EW is, you know, fortunately to be one of them. Thank you, Robin. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, let me grab that uh, one. Um, just now, which gentleman have a question about the QSC? Say, so, okay, what, product, what products are you selling? Food. Food, okay. Uh, can you answer it exactly right? Because for food, you need to register first and then you have a uh, uh, food testing, uh, everything testing, but for the cross border, that's a different story. And the cross border uh, for food, I think only Hangzhou, uh, they can do the clearance for you, for the B2C. But the general trade, which is uh, Kenny's uh, mentioned about, I think SF is doing very well for in this category. Let me start my presentation today. Um, I won't talk about too much about our company. I won't give everyone more information about uh, how you sell in China, how can I help you in the future. Uh, here we go. So, um, EW is an Australian company. We started this business in 2010, mm -hmm. and then uh, our founder Sam, uh, our founder Sam started from 200 square meter warehouse with five people, including his wife as well. And then now, <laughs> 2018, now we uh, already uh, like have the three business hub in Australia, Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. And then we, last year, uh, 2017, we have our uh, business center in Shanghai. Um, now we have more than 200 people. Uh, and then our warehouse in Australia together, 43,000 square meters. And then now our pickup network already in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Hobart, Adelaide, Canberra, Gold Coast, Wollongong, Ancestor, I can't remember that, so I have to read it. Um, um, 2016, that's a big year for us because uh, that's the first year Ali, uh, Alibaba invited us to become Australian uh, channel partner, which if you selling something on Alibaba, you will know there's a call CP. So uh, we become Australian CP, uh, represent Alibaba uh, channel service. Um, so uh, 11 2016 was the first W11 event happening in Australia. Uh, we are lucky, we are the GFC, which is an Alibaba warehouse, we handle the job for them. So in three days, we pick and pack a standing 35,000 puzzles to China. Uh, and then we break the, the world record, we were the first Overseas warehouse number one, including USA, all the other countries. And then last year, 2017, was the second year. So we, we prepared much better. So in two and a half days, we have 60,000 uh, uh, parcels of pig, pike, and sent him to China. Uh, I have to get Amy to help me to play the video. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. And then, um, I bring a video clip uh, to everyone, which is the way what we do in W11 last year. Every year we keep the record and then we have a video uh, team to take a video to show everyone what happened. Um, for the Alibaba, we don't exclusive only work for Alibaba. After the video, I introduce ourselves what we are doing for Australian business owners. I, um, about this uh, uh, pick and pike service, uh, uh, there's a 60,000 parcels only for Alibaba, uh, B2C. If everyone uh, have a look at the news after W11, you see Chemist Warehouse, 
make like a one billion or two billion, I can't remember the numbers. That's from our warehouse, we pick a pack for them. Sorry, we don't have a sound. That's a Sam or founder. So there's a last puzzle. That's just a way make want to make it uh, <laughs> special. And then the the right guy in the blue was is our CEO. Um, for, the, for 2016 W11, we work about uh, 15 hours a day for three days, and then we have a three shift. For 2017 W11, we have a two shift award for 11 hours a day. So it's a, we, we, because we learned a lot from previous year, double, uh, 2016 W11. Um, so we well prepared. So everything we prepared three months before the W11. And then we, and also we invest in um, so much technology to helping us to to helping us to uh, to process the order much quicker and easier, and we also run the cable, uh, internet cable between Australia and China, and to make sure our data stream is faster than any other people. Um, uh, that's a. Uh, our customers, it's not every all the customers. We do have some customers today sitting here, but uh, what what we want to do is we helping Australian business to sell your products into China. But we don't buy, we don't sell. We partnership with big, big platform. So we have a JD, JD today business developer manager shines here from JD. And then we also work with Carla, we work with Alibaba. And then you also can see uh, Australian brand, uh, Terra uh, Y, Camps Warehouse. We also have a very good close relationship with Australian Post as well. Later you will see how we can work together with Australian Post. Um, today I bring uh, two brands, uh, Jack and Jill and uh, Cat Black. That's a, uh, our Victorian brand and then they um, they use our facility for pick and pack service. So we're pretty neutral. We we not work for one platform. We work for our customers. So the customers can come to, come to us and say, "Pay, I want to sell to JD. I want to sell from, to Alibaba." You don't need to prepare different stock. It's just one stock in our warehouse, and then the orders come through the OMS system to our warehouse. We do a pick and pack for you and send into two different channels. We already integrate uh, our tracking with Alibaba, with JD. I think JD, we are the only one Australian logistic company, uh, and then Australian house as well. And then uh, two company, and then you can see the tracking details in JD website. And then um, I talk about the more practical things, what we can do for you. Um, uh, can you, uh, Roy said it's correct. When you want to sell something to China, you have to fix up the logistic problem because the logistic issue is the first priority to fix it. Every single stand you see can directly go to the uh, make your price very competitive. Um, also into China, 3PL, what we do is uh, for the past the three years, we have our Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney log uh, location. You can keep stocking our warehouse. We do the pick and pack for you. So um, before we, we take a Excel file and now everything is a OMS system. So you can put the order into our system. We also connect with a JD, connect with Alibaba. The order push to us automatically. So you don't need to do anything. You can sit, sit, sit in your office, open your computer, have a look at the stock inventory because our WMS push all the information to you. So you can just sit in your office and see all the details. And then this year, probably later of this year, we're going to have our China bulk warehouse as well. So you can keep your stock in our 
Australian warehouse, also you can keep the stock in our Chinese warehouse. So that can help you to forecast. But I want to talk about a bit more about the bond warehouse later. Um, and also domestic is repair because today we are more about a uh, cross border. So I just quickly pass everything. Domestic pig also we can do is in our warehouse, you can sell on eBay, Shopify, Amazon. We do pick and pack for you. So if you selling cross border and domestic, just a single stock in our warehouse, we do everything for you. And then international free every month, Brisbane, Senior, Melbourne, we have 900 ton uh, shipment shipped by air from Australia to China. And then every day is more than 60 shipments sh shipped to China. So we have very big volume. We also do B2B in, the, uh, in this year. So if you want to ship anything stay after to China, we can help you. And then um, customer clearance is more about uh, B2C or C2C clearance. So we don't do general trade clearance at this stage. Value add service is we can help you to have your customer service team in China. So we we have our business center in China. We can, if you want your customer, uh, dedicated customer service team in China, you can uh, hire our staff to do the job for you. Um, that's a probably four ways you can uh, do the cross border business in China. Um, like each one, like like can you introduce some of the uh, service? Like I want to say, what well, first instance, there's a back to ten years ago, eight years ago when we started this uh, Daigo things. There's only one uh, channel you can use as an Australian Post. There's a postal channel, so everything is sent by Australian Post. And then now. Chinese government have a uh, policy change couple, every year, almost every year they have policy change. Now we have direct shipping, we call it the CC channel. And then BC channel, which is um, cross border, you sell it on platform, and then you need the payment information, all the information, and then you need track information to give it to customers, but you don't need ID. So only CC, you need ID. And the bond warehouse, which is, uh, I want to give you some more details, like really, depend on how do you want to sell your product, what you want to sell. And then if you have, for example, 500, gram, 500 kilos uh, vitamin, you say, hey, I want to sell to bond warehouse because it's faster, four to eight days. But I won't, I won't say this is correct because this is going to cost you much more. Uh, when you send to bond warehouse, the, customer, the China customer will put all the stock inject into the bond wells, it costs you 1,500 RMB. So that's an overhead. And then you have to uh, like stock checking everything, that's everything overhead. So if, for example, chemist warehouse or big customers, so they have huge volume, like a meal powder, something, I will say bond warehouse is definitely a good choice for that. And then like a QV, so very big volume in China on the platform, Bond warehouse is definitely a very good choice for them. But if you stock, like you put as a new, very new to Chinese market, I reckon you just try Postal and Direct Shipping CC channel. Postal chi channel, you can pick and pack in your warehouse, give to the post office and then send directly. And then the CC channel, like our CC channel, you just need to have a Chinese ID and, and then uh, you can send to China directly. You don't need to worry about like a registration or anything else. But for the BC channel, you have to register all the details, the payment details, product details. So there's a, there's a more when you're confident to sell into China and then you can go the other way. And also when you partnership with your different platform, you sell to you sell on JD, you sell on uh, Redbook, sell Hongshu, or you sell on Alibaba, and then they also offer you different channels to use. So, so, um, so really depend on what product you sell and how uh, early stage or middle, middle stage you come into Chinese market and then you choose the right way. So the difference from EWE, we, we more about a solution based company. We consolidate all the solution, put everything together. So if we, we also have our train power service under our account. So if you like use our service, and then we stay down with you and then analyze what's the best way, how do you want to sell, which platform you want to sell, how do you want to test the water, and then we can choose a different option for you.
And then uh, that's all about ourselves, C2C and BC China, Bond Warehouse. In China, we have 12 gateways. We are uh, the most busy company in, in Australia for the 12 gateway. So um, I've said 12 gateway. So uh, we can't, for the 12 gateway, we can't tell which one, which gateways and which puzzle. So we build in our AI distribution system. So when your orders come in, our system to analyze uh, the location, the, uh, the, I mean like deliver location, uh, what product inside, vitamin, or milk powder, or cosmetics, and then, uh, and then the value of the puzzle, and then we automatically to split orders into different shipping and send to China into different uh, gateway. We're not using all the truffle get gateway on a daily basis. Some of the gateways are backup gateway. That's a pu like purely because the Chinese government changing policy very often. Also, different from Australian government. Australian government, we have a one custom and a one policy. Everyone using the same, no matter you clear in Sydney or Brisbane. But in China, one policy, you clear in Sydney, uh, sorry, you put clear in Shanghai is different from uh, Guangzhou. So that's why we have a different gateway. We have uh, our team in China to learn the policy, to analyze the policy, to find out which is the best, way, best uh, gateway to for which category product. Uh, that's a pretty much is a, like a flaw about uh, how we can help our customers. So the customers come into EWE, we, we more like a technology company. And then, so everything is based on the data, where you sell, how do you want to sell, what's the value. And then we, yeah, and then we, um, so, so once we sit down, figure out how do you want to sell, and then we think about where warehouse you want to put. And then uh, we do e-commerce orders or uh, direct orders or, or bound warehouse orders. So that's how we help our customers. So we don't have a one part for every one customer. We sit down and analyze that. So make it, what make us special, like uh, we're Australian company, and then you know, we have very strong Chinese background. We know China, like we know China very well. Um, and then our management team is we all have a very strong logistic background or e-commerce background. We all come from China. Uh, learn that or uh, working in this industry before. And then we invite some more than $1 million in IT uh, system developing. We have our own OMS, WMS, ERP, and um, building, such etc. And the customer service for us is very important. So we have a customer service team can speak Mandarin, Cantonese, and English. And then we have customer service team in Shanghai, in uh, all the depot in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. Um, reliable is the first priority for us. So to us, we don't use great channel. We don't use a shortcut. You may hear some people say, "Ah, oh, use our use our service because we can clear it quicker." In China, if you use a great channel, you you it may quicker, but we don't use that. So everything have to be legal and uh, and have to be a correct channel and the reliable channel we use. We don't use a low cost gateway because in China low cost gateway means you may close next month. No, who, who, no one knows. So um, I hope today I give uh, I give everyone useful information, and then if anyone have a question after that can. Two, no, no, they were just two. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Um, uh, every time I talk to Peter, uh, it's something like, Peter, can you tell us where our parcels are? <laughs> so um, Chinese consumers are very um, uh, pedantic. I think that's the right adjective to use uh, in terms of finding out where the parcels are. But um, I see uh, WeChat post made by Peter to say we've won another battle with our brothers. You know, here's our rally cry, and this is after days and days of packing. So uh, they they do a fantastic service. Next, I'd love to uh, invite Richard on on the stage um, from Rex. Um, Rex uh, does a lot of different things, uh, and um, yeah, I'd love to get Richard to tell you guys a little bit more about what they do. Uh, just a quick uh, introduce uh, introduction about our company, uh, uh, we are a Melbourne-based uh, 
uh, company. You know, we, in China we have a, a five office and a four warehouse, and about uh, 150 uh, employees there. And uh, we do some uh, pro procurement. We do international free forwarding for all kind of product. We do uh, 3PL and trade agent. We represent about the 62 uh, Australian brand and distribute in uh, 83 uh, channels in China. Uh, to talk about the free forwarding is quite uh, simple and quite easy, but uh, for details, you have a lot of things to, to say. And uh, for the free forwarding, it normally we divide it into by sea or by air, because the uh, majority of the business between China and Australia is go by free forwarding instead of a parcel, because uh, for the cross-border, um, the, for example, the healthy supplement, this kind of thing is very difficult to get the blue, blue label or new product come to China. They have to take a long time to pass the CIQ. They want to taste the market. And then cross-border is a very good way to do that. But when you go volume, uh, for example, JD, uh, among the cross-border and the normal e-commerce business, uh, cross border is a very small percentage among the, the the business, but so some they go cross border and some they go uh, the the general trading. So free forwarding is the one of the way to do that. Uh, and that's the one thing. The other thing is, uh, for example, uh, Peter mentioned some bony warehouse. Uh, when you launch the bony warehouse, you still send volume goods to China. You go to the bony uh, bony area, you send by container or send by air. So if you go by sea, normally there are three kind of a container. You have a 20-foot container, a 40-foot container, a 40-foot high queue. So uh, you also have some refer container. And uh, normally it's, uh, you can have a zero degree or a four degree or minus 18. And then some special uh, uh, container, if you send a tuna to China, if you, you need maybe four, minus 45. So this kind of a by sea business is a different area. You send to Guangzhou, maybe take about uh, two and a half weeks. If you go to Tianjin, it can be four or five weeks because you have to transfer it to Shanghai or Busan. If you go by air, it's quite easy. And it just uh, uh, normally uh, from Melbourne, uh, we already uh, can get a six or seven city direct airline. You can go to Guangzhou, you can go to Xiamen, even you can go to Qingdao, a small city in North China. Although we see in China, we say small, but it's a very big city. Uh, uh, but if you go by air, it's just something different from weight and measurement. If, uh, for example, in, uh, in by sea, it's a one cubic meter, you charge weight one cubic meter or one ton, similar. But if you go by air, so one cubic meter is different. It's, uh, so 167 kilo, uh, uh, kg. So it's, that's a different. For export documentation, if, if you come to China, uh, some of the product come to China can enjoy the uh, duty uh, lower than the other country. For example, uh, there was a one uh, uh, company want to export some margarine to China. It's uh, the, car, the cargo from uh, uh, Canada, the same the competitor. The Chinese government charged them a 30% of duty. If you issue the certificate of original between the China and Australia, China government only charged 6%. So the clients enjoy a lot, the deduction. So another thing is the healthy certificate. So majority of the then uh, agriculture product, such as the dairy product or food product, they need extra. So uh, many of the Chinese uh, Australian company, I mean the big four, uh, such as the CT or Manfred or Mode, they, have, they can help you to have these kind of things to, to apply the extra. There's no need for you pay a few thousand dollars to apply this kind of thing, but you can pay maybe $100, $20 per year. So that is things you have to prepare. The export package and domestic package. So some companies are China ready, some is not. So for example, I give you an example. We, we export more than 100, uh, no, it's, uh, 100 tons uh, milk powder every, every month uh, to China. So some company, they still use the domestic packing. 
So you know, on the shelf, the Australian shelf, the, the uh, Australian packies, uh, they just uh, cut a line, easy open the box, and then just uh, put uh, the box on the shelf, easy for the clients to pick up. But this kind of a packing, easy broken on the way. So the used milk will broke on the way. A lot of worm happen. Maybe 70% of this kind of packing will happen, this kind of thing. So CIQ will penalty seriously when these this things happen. So if, if you have this kind of a record in China, China CIQ, maybe it's a bad image of the brand. So think about the, the export package and the domestic package. So that is the, the free forwarding thing. And for the trading agent, that is, a, uh, we, we talk about several things. Trade agent, uh, if you do the Daigo market in, in domestic market, you, some companies say, okay, just uh, like Daigo deal with me directly. Some KOL or big Daigo, they have a volume. Maybe they export about one million uh, a year, but majority of them, they just export a little. So you cannot uh, deal with them. You, you have to hire Chinese speaking, you have to deal with them small things, they buy you a 10 package and then return one, so you have no time to do that. So hire a local agent to do it for you. So what I suggest is that each uh, area, you select the one, do not select too many. Some uh, brands say, okay, I have a hundred the agent for me, oh, it's no meaning. So they're fighting each other, make you price in the mess. So each area, just to find one. If they are not good, maybe you choose another one. So uh, because uh, their friend, your clients is uh, Chinese gift shops, and the gift shops will uh, sell the product to Daigo. So majority of the Chinese uh, gift shop are based in Sydney and Melbourne, each area normally 200 shops there, and a little bit in Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide. And another thing I have to say is the KOL. And uh, KOL, is uh, they attend all kind of uh, live streaming. They can do some marketing thing for your, for your product. So Taobao, for example, Taobao Global have some uh, live streaming every year. They have a, the Alibaba have their, their trade show every year. Too. Last year they have one in Melbourne. This year they were Melbourne and the Sydney. Uh, so you can invite some KOL to attend these kind of things. So your trade agent can help you to find the right KOL. Not every KOL is uh, suitable for your clients. So that's the trade agent do for you. Another uh, thing is a trade agent for cross-border. Cross-border is, uh, is uh, very uh, uh, easy to do customer clearance and very easy for Chinese clients to buy the product, but very difficult to deal with uh, the 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 e-commerce platform because the the in 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 uh, Amazon they have the fixed the way to do marketing but in China in China e-commerce company every three months they change a little bit every six months they totally change so if you have a right partner they can help you they help you understand each platform for example Redbook is different from JD. Timo is different from VIP. So you have to find a partner to tell you which platform is suitable for your product and which way you do is the right way. So that is the things you, you the, the, the trade partner should have account in the platform they declare to help you to sell the clients. Some distributors say, I have all the e-commerce platform I can distribute all the, all area to you, you just check which uh, which company you have account. But somebody say oh, just just have a three account. They declare they can deliver your product to everywhere. So that's the nonsense. So that's the things uh, you have to be careful. So another thing is the foreign currency transfer. Uh, some e-commerce cross border company they pay in US dollar instead of Australian dollar. Australian dollar and US dollar they always there is a flexible, and then it may happen something. So, which way to avoid that is that you persuade the you you trade agent to open the Australian dollar account in your in your clients in your e-commerce platform because 
for example, they not represent your brands only. Maybe they represent a brand from Europe or from US. They say maybe it's easy for them just to open one account to set it on the payment for all the things, but not easy for you product. So if the currency is just a one, you just avoid the risk of a currency exchange. So that is the thing. Another one is uh, the e-commerce company normally want a long credit. So some, maybe 15 days, some, maybe 45 days. So you trade agent have to have enough cash flow to prepare for you, not use your capital to do that. Normally, the, you can give 30 days here, but if they send by, sh by, by shipment, take about the three weeks or four weeks to China, and then waiting for another 45 days. So they have to prepare some money. They, they are not just a dealer to get and buy, buy and sell. They have to use their capital, their manpower to do something for you. So just a roughly uh, introduction about the trade agent and the free forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. in cross-border e-commerce, especially for logistics <laughs> companies, and uh, logistics companies like PostNord and you know, uh, Portugal Post all actively try to copy the same business model. But um, I'll leave it to Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. So um, as you were just told, I'm Lisa Chan, and I'm the head of International Postal for Australia Post. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is a channel that's quite different to the ones that you've just heard about. Because ultimately, what we offer to businesses who want to start trading internationally is a postal channel. It's actually the simplest way for people to start sending overseas. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is a little bit about Australia Post first, and then I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that we're seeing from a cross-border marketplace perspective. And then I'll talk to you about some of the ways that we can help you try and access the opportunity that we see coming through. If I can work out how to do the clicker. There we go. So it's three post. Most of you will know the name. When I say to most people who's a three post, they generally think about the postie who delivers their mail to the house. Or they might think about the local post office that they go into to pay a bill. <laughs> Or they might even think about the parcels that they receive because they've been shopping online. And you know what that is, who Australia Post is, but it's actually only really one part of who we are. We're actually a lot more complex than that. So if we go back in time and you think about Australia Post, you know, we opened our first post office in 1809. We have been a part of the Australian fabric, the Australian community ever since then. We're essential to Australia. So we're also a government-owned company. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that just like any other business in Australia, we operate with commercial targets, we have commercial objectives, and we need to succeed. But the difference is that every Australian is in essence a shareholder within our company. So we report to you. We're also fortunate and challenged by the fact that we have a community obligation. So as a business, we are actually obliged to help every Australian access the essential services that Australia Post offers. Now, that can be a disadvantage because it's expensive for us to be able to facilitate that and offer that service, but it's also a significant advantage because it means that we have a network both within Australia and overseas that nobody else does. We have over 4,300 post offices. That's the largest retail network of anybody in Australia. So we've heard about our network. You've heard about the fact that we're government owned, but we run like a private business. All of that means that we're in effect 
the largest Australian-owned logistics company in this country. So we have an annual revenue of $6.8 billion. We have a large retail network. We deliver to over 340 million addresses worth worldwide. And we deliver to over 190 countries. Now, to put that into context, there's actually only 195 countries in the world. So there's not very many parts of this, this globe that we don't go to. On top of that, we're one of the largest employers of people in this country. We have a workforce of over 80,000 people. And that covers everyone from the guy who works in your parcel facility to the postie who does deliver your mail to the counter operator in a retail outlet. It's massive. So you've heard about Australia Post. Let's talk about the trends that we're seeing from a cross-border trade perspective. You know, our business is all about cross-border trade. The people who use us are selling their wares online. If you look at what's happening to the market on a global level, once upon a time, you know, Western Europe, USA, they would have been the largest e-commerce markets. By 2021, China is going to be twice that size of both of those markets combined. So if you then think about where Australia is positioned, we're in a great spot to be able to take advantage of that. You know, consumers are going to spend $2.5 trillion online this year. $2.5 trillion, I can't even actually get my head around that, right? So my husband pays out on me for shopping online. I tell you what, there's a hell of a lot of other people who are doing that. Um, our top five export markets are China, Japan, Korea, the US and India. And if you once again look at that map and you look at where four of those top five markets are, it sends a pretty clear message in where you should be focusing your business. So how can the Australia Post actually help you take advantage of that market? Well, one of the things we're doing is we've changed our business model. We've become really focused on international. This is where our future is. And we want to help Australian businesses to be able to access that market as well. So we've entered into a number of strategic partnerships <coughs> with people like Lazada, Tmall, JD, Alibaba, the names you've heard tonight. We also have strategic partnership with ASEAN. We have joint ventures with China Post. So our business, Sai Cheng, that allows us to have 13 warehouses in eight, country, eight cities in China. And you know, there's 19 bonded warehouses within that business sitting within the free trade zone. So that's a really strong advantage for somebody who's trying to enter this market. We also have a solution that is a postal solution. So if you're starting off and you're starting to send your goods into China, your customer has a little bit of a different experience. Unlike a commercial carrier where they do have to upload their ID and there are different tax rates and there are different processes, with postal, you put your customs form on your parcel, you take it to a post office or you phone one of our services and we get, get it picked up for you and we send it in. It's really quick, it's really efficient. We have a number of different service feeds available for you, so your price points can be all different. And it's working really effectively. So from our perspective, our focus is going to be working with businesses within Australia to really expand their global, their global footprint. We'll continue to develop with our joint partners will continue to develop with our strategic partners. Now, we also work outside of that on supporting our small businesses to be able to set themselves up to be able to do business. So we have a team within Australia Post who works specifically on market insights. There's a number of reports that have been written and released just recently. In fact, it was the online shop um, report was released on Monday. That's all about market insights for online shoppers. And you know, in the next page, I'll give you the link to that. So you can actually go and download it, have a look at it, understand the trends that we're seeing within this business. We've done a number of white papers around small businesses and the best way for them to approach going global and the best way for them to approach making their business international. And in June, towards the end of the month, 
we'll actually be launching a platform called Growing Global. And we've got um, you know, partners here today who are working with us on that platform. That's a place where any person who wants to start trading internationally can go on, onto that site, they can access information about the different lanes, they can look at China and understand what the regulations are for sending it to China, how they have to set up their business, what they need to do from a marketing perspective. And then they can access strategic partners who specialise in, in the different parts of going international. So what we want to do is support Australian businesses to be able to grow their business internationally. Because ultimately, if we're able to do that, as a business, we're successful. So I'm going to leave it there, try to get, try to get us back on time a little bit. Um, before I go, I do encourage you to take a photo, go and have a look at the latest paper that we have released. It's got a lot of interesting stats about going um, global and what we're seeing from a trend perspective from online shopping. And if you have any questions afterwards, just come and find me. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I, I would like to emphasize how um, special the postal channel is. Um, when you send a product to China via you know, parcels, you can either go commercial or postal. And when you use a, um, you know, depending on where you are, there's typically one and uh, one postal organization uh, in the country, um, and they only it's uh, it's exclusive channel for the postal organization. And uh, if you're a part of the EMS network, which is um, a, a type of protocol service um, that's only available to postal organizations, uh, you pretty much all you need to do put the product in the parcel and uh, fill out the right paperwork. Uh, it's quite simple to fill out the HS codes, the weight, value, uh, have the right signature in place. And that actually goes all the way to the Chinese consumer without any uh, major you know, delays. And if you use part of the EMS network, uh, using ECI as an example, Express Career International, it gets to the consumer hands within three, four days. Right. Four, four, three, four, de depending on where you are, right? But it's a remarkable thing to be able to deliver something from the Australian warehouse to the Chinese consumer in such a short span of time. Now, um, when you're engaging much larger activities, you definitely need to engage in a commercial operations for a much more scalable operation. Um, but um, EMS is a fantastic channel. Um, so, sorry, just quickly, did that explain the place for the food items? Um, yes. Yeah, so. What we're doing in our business at the moment is we don't have a solution for cold chain, so we can't do um, cold chain at this point in time. What about ambient food products? Well, we are looking into whether we are able to be able to do ambient, so I do not have a solution right now, but it is being actively worked on. Um, I would hope to be able to say to you that we'll be able to offer you an ambient solution within the next 12 months.